How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Now, I asked how you're doing. I know how you're doing. Not so good watching the bottom half of this Yankees batting order. We're going to talk about it today, why the offense is struggling, what's going on, and essentially how we think we can fix it. Because right now, the Yankees need some serious supplemental support. Their depth is atrocious. The guys that are healthy are atrocious. And we are desperately missing guys like Giancarlo Stanton and Harrison Bader, who's going to be coming back soon. But the bottom half of the order, man, has been just terrible to watch. It's been painfully, painstakingly terrible to sit there on the couch and watch these guys continuously strike out or, you know, get out with runners in scoring position. Now, the top half of the order, they've had their fair share of ups and downs. Um, DJ LeMay, he starting to climb back up into the awesome category, getting at three hits yesterday, the really only player that was able to get anything going, aside from that Rizzo solo shot. This is definitely a situation where the Yankees need a jolt of energy, a burst of energy. Where is it going to come from? We're not exactly sure, but we're going to break it down for you guys, take a look at kind of what's going on right now at the bottom half of this order and how even Aaron Boone, there's nothing he can do. Like, you look at the talent on the roster right now, there's nothing he can do to make a difference unless you're calling guys up or trading for people. This is what we have to work with, and it's a it's a load of shit, to be quite honest with you. There's no other way to say it. It's a freaking load of dog shit, and we're going to take a look at how bad it is right now. Ryan, tell me what you're thinking, uh, your, your kind of impression of what's going on uh, regarding the Yankees' offense, and how you do today, my friend. Um... For every reason outside of the Yankees, I'm doing well. For every reason outside of the New York Yankees, I'm doing well. Uh, but when we're talking in the context of the New York Yankees, it's not so hot. It's not looking great. You know, I'm in the, I'm sitting in the sixth inning, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Clark Schmidt narratives are up today, you know? Uh, the narratives are doing well, and then, you know, it just gets away from the Yankees. And, you know, a 3 nothing lead should not be like, hey, you know what? The game's over. You should be like, you know what? Let's get some runs. Let's get something going. Let's let's answer back. Let's get a run here in the sixth, maybe two, um, answer back. This offense is incapable of doing it. I had no faith the second this team went down 3-0 that they were going to win that game. And I'm a very optimistic fan. I, I have been extremely optimistic, and I remain optimistic about this team. Uh, but the bottom of the lineup is, I mean, I'm sorry. The roster guys weren't major league players. Uh, Willie Calhoun is not a major league player. No disrespect to Willie Calhoun, but he's got a negative 2.7 war in his career. He's got an 82 WRC plus in his career. He has one positive F4 season, and that was in 2019. In 2019, when he was playing well for the Texas Rangers, I wasn't a part of Empire Sports Media. I just want people to realize that. It's been four years since Willie Calhoun was not a good major league baseball player, just not a terrible one. It's been four years. Four why is he on this team? Uh, look, I'm not sitting here and saying the Yankees have some superstar prospects sitting in AAA, um, but you couldn't do better. You couldn't, there was, you know, you had the entire offseason. You couldn't find anyone who could play Major League Baseball. Um, I, I'm, I'm just curious, that's all. Franchi Cordero, I know, has been bad lately, but, you know, the idea was he was going to come in, if he gave you a couple home runs, a couple big ones, and then sucked after, you didn't really care. And I think Franchi Cordero has fulfilled this contract. But when Harrison Bader comes back, I want to see less of Franchi Cordero. No disrespect to the guy. It's just that he's a career bad player. And now we're getting to see that, right? Again, thank you for the for the four home runs. Thank you for helping us beat Cleveland. That was great. Love you, man. You're awesome. But your time is kind of coming to an end as like an everyday player. Um I'm going to list off a couple other guys. Oswaldo Cabrera, Josh Donaldson, Isaiah Kainafalefa, Aaron Hicks, Kalagashioka, Jose Trevino. What do all these guys have in common? They have a worse WRC plus than Marwin Gonzalez did last year. Marwin was so bad, the Yankees didn't play him for two weeks at a stretch in the season. They have 46.7% of guys who have taken a plate appearance for the New York Yankees are worse than Marwin Gonzalez at the plate. I want people to wrap their heads around that. Nearly half of your position players are worse than Marwin Gonzalez with the bat. Uh, look, again, I've been pretty optimistic. I've been pretty fair with the front office. How the hell does it get to that point in April? You lose John Carlos Stan and suddenly you don't, you can't roster major league baseball players. It, does John Carlos Stan take five guys with him when he goes to the IL? I don't love that he keeps getting hurt, but are we going to sit here and pretend him getting hurt should be the difference between this team playing like an, a, like a, you know, a world series contender. And then this team having a triple a lineup, like Let's be real here, right? Um, do I think it'll turn around? Yes. It's part of what's going to happen when you're playing three guys in Cabrera, Peraz, and Volpe who are young and experienced, have combined like 150 games of Major League experience, all three of them. That's not a lot of experience. Um, you know, I, I understand them struggling, but Willie Calhoun can't be here for much longer. 
figure out what you're doing in center field. We need Bader back. IKF and Hicks cannot swing the bat. Um, and figure out what you're doing with Hicks. Is he, uh, is he part of the team or is he not? If he's not part of the team, fine. DFA him. Give me, like, I, we're, we're playing with 25 players and then Aaron Hicks, right? That's what the Yankees are doing right now. The Aaron Hicks does not play anymore. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be funny. We're probably going to see him in the lineup tonight, actually. That'd be, that'd be pretty funny if we did. Um, but seriously, like, you're playing with 25 guys and Aaron Hicks and your position players aren't playing very well. Figure it out. DFA him or play him. I, I, it's one or the other. DFA the guy or play the guy. I don't love his comments with the athletic, but they're kind of making sense now. Figure out what the hell you're going to do with the guy. You can't just carry a guy to sit there and do nothing, especially with this lineup. I mean, look, the, the reality is, is that we have a couple players that are just wasting space on this roster. Aaron Hicks, unfortunately, is one of them. Now, to start the year, he's played in, what, 11 games? He has 27 plate appearances, a pretty small sample size, but he hit in 125 with a 222 OBP. He has a 6 WRC+, plus, a 6 WRC+, plus with negative 0.3 war, if there's no other way to just, say, to just to say this straight out. He is a net negative to this team, and he has been for years. So despite the fact the Yankees are paying him $10.5 million, what is the point of paying someone $10.5 million if they are going to be a bad player and actually hurt your team? And the reality is you look at Franchi Cordero, thank you for the four home runs. We really appreciate that. But the last couple of games have been abysmal. Now, we hope Franchi could continue his kind of consistent stretch where he was looking really good to start the season. But he's been a career-awful MLB player, and I guess that's just coming around to fruition. It's just showcasing. It's rearing its ugly head once again. IKF, a lot of people will, in the comments, consistently in the comments, defend IKF. He has a 13 WRC+, plus, a negative 0.3 war. He's hitting 176 with a 222 OBP. He's looked a little bit better lately, but still, you're not getting anything above average from IKF. He made a couple of okay plays in center field. One of them, two diving plays. The second one was good. The first one he lost in the sun and was forced to compensate for that. Um, IKF, you know, another net negative. Three of three of the primary guys that we have on the bench as our depth pieces getting every everyday reps one way or another, one of them is starting every single day, are below average players, and it's not even close. It's like way below average. So the question for you, Ryan, is how, what do you do now? Do you look at guys... Maybe like Elijah Dunham in AAA, who's tearing it up right now. I think it's in like 250, maybe more than that, with like a 358, 350 OBP, maybe 348. Um, he's been excellent. So, you know, do you look to our farm system to find supplements? Are you looking at guys like Dunham saying, hey, let's call him up, and that way Oswaldo Cabrera can move around? Like, look, Dunham's not going to be starting every day, but the, the Yankees change their alignment. They change their, their lineup every day. Like, it's every day there's a new outfield going on, and eventually Aaron Judge is going to need some rest. The reason Aaron Judge is playing every day is because they cannot afford to lose his bat in the lineup. If they don't have Aaron Judge in the lineup, I, the Yankee fans, the Yankee fan base is going to go absolutely nuts because it'll just literally be a punt day. Without Judge, your offense is basically nothing. So what do you do right now? Do you, you call up a guy like Dunham who can help supplement some reps, take over some of the uh, these kind of really bad players that are getting everyday opportunities? Where do you go from here? I know a trade would be ideal, but it's still early in the season. It doesn't seem that the Yankees are about to make anything you know imminent happen. So who are you looking at to maybe help? smooth things over, at least get some opportunities here with upside, because at least Dunham has a lot of upside and traditionally has really good play discipline um, at the minor league level. Yeah, um, here's the thing. Those are You're supposed to address that in the offseason. I shouldn't be sitting here and saying, we shouldn't be sitting here and saying, well, you know, at the trade deadline, they can do X, Y, and Z. That's what the offseason is for. You, you, you go out and you improve your team in the offseason, right? Um, you gave $6 million to IKF, who, as you mentioned, has not been bad, has been atrocious, right? There's a difference between bad and atrocious. He has been about as bad as you can be. Um, yes, he made some pretty cool catches. If you look at the, the catch probability on those, um, I think Michael K said it, the one where he made that crazy diving grab, 99% catch probability. Can, you know, like, he's just taking bad jumps and diving to recover. This, is, this isn't, this is you know, like an Aaron Judge when he robbed Shohei Otani. That's an insane catch. That is a run-saving catch. IKF just pulled the Clint Frazier. Hey, I don't know how to play the outfield, but I'm going to make a dive. I appreciate the effort, and he has played a solid center field. I think he even has plus one DRS there. Like, it's not like he's a bad center fielder. He's not, like, an elite center fielder defensively, though. This isn't Harrison Bader out there where, you know, if Harrison Bader puts up, like, a 90 WRC+, plus, but elite defense, he's going to finish with, like, three wins of a replacement. IKF is at a negative. IKF is 
not been good this year, right? You gave him $6 million. And the reason that it made sense at the time was because your two shortstops were Peraza and Volpe. Rookies who, you know, if one of them were to get hurt or if one of them were to struggle, who do you go to instead of, you know, those guys? It would have been IKF reasonably. Um, but they gave up on IKF being a shortstop. And I don't know if you read this report where they gave up on him in spring training, right? For all the talk we heard about how good of a defensive shortstop he is and what the internal metrics say, you gave up on a guy at shortstop defensively despite all of your internal data in spring training? You gave up on him entirely? So now he's an outfielder only, right? Like, are you then he couldn't have been that good at shortstop. He couldn't have been worth $6 million freaking dollars. If you wanted a backup outfielder, Tommy Pham was available, Adam Duvall was available, Andrew McCutcheon was available. Hell, if you wanted a guy who could play the outfield and the infield, Brian Anderson was available. All of these guys can hit the baseball, even if they gave you a 100 WRC+. plus. That is 50 times better than what you're getting from everyone else on the lineup. These, like, look... I'm not saying that they can't improve or that they're, this is how they're going to play for the rest of the season. I'm not even ignoring this. They're 13 and 9. They're 13 9, but they're, they're on a 96 win pace despite all of this. They have the best pitching staff in the American League when healthy. I, they, they are very good at pitching. They're a very good defensive team. They're middle of the lineup. Rizzo, LeMahieu, Glaber, Judge, you know, that that's working. That's a good lineup. That you, you're, you feel comfortable there. It's just that they don't have good depth. And when you're relying on rookies and you don't have good depth, we're going to run into situations like this. Do I think it'll pick up when Cabrera turns it around? Yes, because Cabrera can't be a 48 WRC plus hitter all year. Or at least I hope not. Peraza is at an 85. I imagine that gets better. Volpe is at an 87. That's probably going to get better. So those three guys turning around is going to help, but this team is in a rut right now, and it's easy to be frustrated. Am I Again, I'm not concerned long-term outlook, but I am concerned about April. I'm concerned about how April, the rest of April, is going to look with this lineup. And I think you can agree with me there. There's like a line between, there's a nice line between, hey, the season's over, and I'm upset at how this team is playing right now, and I don't necessarily know how it's going to be short, fixed in the short term. Again, Guys are going to have to step up internally because you, you can mention Dunham. We can mention Chaparro. I know Jake Bowers is off to an insane start. He has like eight home runs in his first few games at AAA. Um, but end of the day, these are prospects. These are minor leaguers. These aren't major league proven talent. They're not going to come up and immediately light it up. So um, I don't really know what the option is internally other than just hope your guys play better, which is not the words I want to hear, but that's the truth. So here's another question for you. Um, when Josh Donaldson returns... You imagine he takes over his third base spot, you know, in his cemented job there, which is kind of disheartening because we know DJ LeMay, who's a better player. We know how much better offensively he is. And Oswald Peraza, I'd rather give him the opportunity right now than Donaldson has proven to be a liability offensively. We know he's a fine defensive third baseman. Um, do you think that Donaldson returns and immediately resumes playing third base every day? And if that does happen, where do you think he ends up landing in the batting order? Do you think he takes over that fifth spot again? Or do you think DJ LeMahieu um, remains at five and then Donaldson gets pushed to six, which may, you could theoretically say, bolster the batting order? But I, I again, I'd rather have Peraza there. I think the upside is is prevalent. I think his, his discipline has looked pretty solid so far. He's got some walks. He's making some nice contact. Um, he needs more experience. He just needs more opportunities. He needs more reps. And the ultimate reality is like a lot of these young players, Oswaldo, Peraza, um, and then of course Volpe, they need time. You know, like we were just going to have to suffer for the first months of the season why they got adjusted to the MLB level. Peraza gets a later start because of the injuries and, you know, just gets called up last week. Oswaldo Cabrera, you know, he's never been like the most exciting offensive prospect and he's more than capable of providing, he may be hitting 250 with a 32% on base percentage. I think we'd all be happy with that. Um, but, you know, he's not a big time slugger. He's more of a contact piece with great defensive qualities everywhere. Um, so what do you happen? What do you think happens at third base when Donaldson comes back? Do you think he's you know? I, I imagine Boone's gonna be like, we need him back in the lineup. We need him back. And like, that's sad because he's not very good anymore, and his swing decisions are bad. His play, his play discipline's bad. His chase rates are way up, and everything about his offensive game is just taking a nosedive. Um, but you know for a fact Boone loves him, loves having him at third base. That probably means Peraza gets sent back to the AAA team. But how do you think that unfolds, and where do you think he ends up landing in the, in the batting order? Um, do you think he ends up at five again or or below that? Yeah, this all depends on how Peraza plays, and that's that should be the answer, right? If Peraza stinks for the next month and Donaldson comes back and they're like, all right, um, we need some sort of jolt and we're going to try out Josh Donaldson after he had a really good spring training, yeah, I'll understand that. Um, I'll It'll suck. It, it won't be popular, um, but I think you can agree with me. Like, if Peraza really – I mean, it's not like bad as in like, you know, not great. I mean like bad, like atrocious, like like a, a liability in the lineup type bad. Then it'll be a justifiable decision. If Oswald Peraza has a WRC plus over 100 and they send him down, I'm going to be livid. Um, look, 
Josh Donaldson has not proven anything um, outside of that spring training that would suggest that he is going to be a much better hitter than around a 105 to 110 WRC+. plus. If Peraza's giving me that, I don't know if the glove is going to be better. I don't know. Uh, he looked pretty good there, but I, I again, I don't know. Um, but I know the base running's better. I know I actually have a player who can run. Uh, not as much of a double play threat. Um, younger, um, more upside, all of those things. Could you get creative? Maybe, but how do you get creative and fit Torres, LeMahieu, Volpe, and Peraz and Dante? You can't really fit all of them into the same infield without sitting like a Rizzo, which you're not doing. Obviously, Rizzo's been incredible. Um, so the issue is just like, where do you play? When do you play Josh Donaldson? That's that's a big question. Uh, the issue is just have like a million infielders, right? Uh, if Josh Donaldson was an outfielder, and I'm going to spawn this question, and I wonder what you think about this. If Josh Johnson was an, a left fielder and he was coming off of the year he came off of last year, yet he would be a, a well-welcomed addition to this lineup. That's how bad the outfield is compared to the infield. If Josh Donaldson was coming back and he was an outfielder, then we would have a conversation. The, diff, the, 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 the problem is, is just that he would only be a welcome addition if third base is a black hole. And even if third base is a black hole, your, your the right response would be, okay, LeMahieu plays third, Glaber plays second, Volpe plays short, Rizzo plays first, and then we figure out the DH spot. The, ra the, the rational solution would not be, okay, play Donaldson over LeMahieu or, or, or Peraza. So it's going to depend on how Peraza plays, but the problem is just that Donaldson isn't better than LeMahieu and Peraza is more promising to Donaldson so it's kind of hard to feel like you're going to find a situation for Donaldson to justifiably come back you know what I mean absolutely I mean look right now this team and for what it's worth the last three days have been really bad uh, mainly because Aaron Judge just has struggled against Toronto um, the last three games he's been on base one time and struck out five, four times so you know when this lineup when Judge is cold the whole team is cold and like that's the sad part about it is that you're relying on Judge to carry you, right? We pay him $360 million to do that. When the team is struggling, he carries us. But when Judge is struggling, you see the vulnerabilities in this in this lineup. You see the vulnerabilities on this offense. Um, and that's become a really bad situation is that if Judge is not playing well, the whole team looks like a like like a farm team. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're really, really hurting when he's suffering. Um, and like I said, he's only been on one base, uh, on base once in his last three games against Toronto. And that's really, really tough to watch because once again, we realize that without Judge, this team sucks. You know, without Judge, this team is garbage. This offense is garbage. Volpe is still trying to get his, his sea legs, and I understand that. And we're going to give him a long leash because he, he deserves it. We've seen uh, what he's capable of. That two-run blast the other day against Toronto was tremendous. It was awesome. It was so much fun to watch. Um, and he's going to start to get more consistent. He's going to go through the streaks and like any rookie would. Uh, but we're more than happy to let him go through those pain, th those growing pains. But, you know, when Judge goes cold, we see how bad this team really is. You know, without Stanton to help pick things up when, St when, when Judge is struggling, Stanton is usually the one that can hit the home runs and get some points on the board. And then you look at Harrison Bader. When he comes back, he's going to add speed, athleticism, and some good contact qualities and some underrated power to this lineup especially at the bottom where he'll, he'll take over a Frenchie Cordell role or an IKF or a Hicks role, and it'll be a lot more consistent. He's not the best hitter in the world, but he at least can get on base at times and he at least can make stuff happen on base. So, you know, I'll ask you this. When you're looking at Judge's impact on this team and when he's going through minor cold streaks like this, you know, hasn't his numbers just got destroyed. His, his season average is up to this point. He got destroyed against Toronto. He'll elevate them again. It'll be fine. But when you see how how unreliable this team is, aside from a couple of individuals, notably Rizzo, as you mentioned, how how scary is it to realize that without Judge, we may not even be a playoff team? Yeah, it's it sucks. Obviously, you know, I don't think about it too much because Judge is here for the next nine years. Like, I thought about that a lot more in the offseason. I thought about that a lot more when John Heyman tweeted the Arson Judge tweet. But I know Judge is on this team. I figure he's going to turn it around. I'm not too concerned about what this team looks like without Judge. Until there's an injury. If there's an injury, then yeah, I start pressing panic buttons. Um, but as long as Judge is healthy, as long as Judge is on this team, I'm going to feel confident that, you know what, I don't have to think too much about a world without Judge. But that's a fair point to make, right? Where, like, right now, Judge isn't playing well. This is, like, the first regular season slump Judge has had since 2021. Like, 2022, he did not slump. He Slumping was not something he did. Even when he had the 
homerless streak. Um, he had like a 600 on base because dudes just didn't pitch to him. Um, that's just how good he was. Like, it was incredible. Um, now it feels like he's pressing a little bit more. It doesn't look like the Aaron Judge we saw last year. And obviously, it was going to regress from, hey, I hit home runs every day and pitch pitchers don't want to pitch me anymore um, to like, hey, I'm just a really good baseball player. Um, and I still think the world of him, nothing has changed with my view of Aaron Judge. But you're right. You know, whenever he does slump, he slumped and then Stanton got hurt. Like those are the two, those are probably the two worst things you could happen minus Judge also getting hurt um, for this lineup. And, and, and this team doesn't look the same. Uh, and that's definitely concerning. Again, this team needed more depth. This team needed to get a fourth outfielder. And they tried to convince everyone that they could make I half a fourth outfielder, and that obviously has not worked because that was never going to work. That is probably the stupidest idea they've come up with in a while. Not as stupid as when they put a third base in to play shortstop, but close enough. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't uh, – without Judge, this team really is that bad offensively. Now the pitching staff is excellent, which is great. Like, they pro again, probably have the best pitching staff in the American League, um, maybe even in all of baseball. Um, but – Look, uh, if Judge isn't turning around, this is going to be a pretty ugly week for the Yankees. Uh, so hopefully to Minnesota, maybe he gets something going there. Absolutely. You know, we hope for the best here. And if things don't start to turn around quickly, especially for some of these guys that are consistently struggling, you know, Boone and, and Cashman are going to have to make changes. And I'm curious to see what they're going to be. But ultimately, I am very curious um, regarding what they do because changes need to happen. They need to happen now, sooner rather than later. These guys are not performing, and the Yankees are a $288 million payroll team. This is unacceptable. You cannot have guys. IKF is making $6 million. Franchi Cordero is making pretty much nothing, and then you have Hicks making $10.5 million, so you're really just throwing away close to $20 million on players that are not are producing. And look, if you're not going to use Hicks, DFA him. He is mentally shot. He is confidence is gone. If you're if you're not using him, you better believe that he's in the locker room right now saying they're not even using me. They don't value my qualities. How are you going to step up to the plate like that as a human being and expect to produce? You're not going to. He's not going to produce for us. He's not in the right mindset, not right in the right headspace. And a lot of these players aren't. So eventually they're going to have to cut bait. They're going to have to make some decisions here. And I'd love to see them promote one of their youngsters like Elijah Dunham. Yes, he's going to struggle. Any player getting promoted from AAA to the MLB is going to struggle in some way, somehow. But they need someone with upside because Hicks, he's done. IKF, there's no there's no real upside there. Franchi Cordero, traditionally an awful MLB player. There's not much upside there. Maybe the occasional home run, but that's not worth it um, if he's going to strike out and get out pretty much every other time he's at bat. Um, so I'd rather give you know the, the reps to someone who actually deserves it, justified it, and has a lot of untapped potential that we can actually extrapolate and expand on. But guys, I love your perspectives. Of course, this offense has been really tough to watch. It's been a hard watch, and it probably will continue to do so until they make some, some changes. But always happy to hear perspectives, what you think the Yankees should do, what you think the problems are. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe to the Fireside Yankees podcast, as well as drop a five-star review on Apple and Spotify if you are so kind. We appreciate that very much. But we got a game coming up tonight. Hopefully, we can get a win. We really, really need it. Minnesota Twins, we got Johnny Burrito on the, on the mound today, hopefully bouncing back after his last tough performance against uh, Minnesota. But he came back and fired some good stuff in his most recent game, so we'd love to see that. But as always, appreciate you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.